Yeah. Hi, guys. Good Hello. morning. Good morning. It's nice to meet you. Um, okay, so tell us everybody. In, introduce both of yours, both of you, and tell us a little bit about y'all. Um, my name is Madison Conroy. Um, I am a rising senior at American University. Um, and I'm here as an intern at Florida House. I'm working on the 50th anniversary video as my big project. And um, hmm. I guess uh, my major and my focus really for uh, what I wanna do in the future is national security and foreign policy. So um, ha having this internship has allowed me to make connections in the capital, which is great. Oh, yeah. So I can get like a step forward, especially since this fall is job hunting season. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, good for you. Congratulations. And were you named for James Madison? I <laughs> don't know, but um, I always see my name everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Very good. And you? Um, I am Kate Brocht. I am the Programs and Marketing Officer here at Florida House. So under the Programs umbrella, I have the absolute privilege of managing our intern team. So I am working with our summer group on a variety of projects. So I am joining in with Madison today just to help take notes and be another face on the call and provide any, any backup or resources. So I'm... I'm really excited. This summer has just been too much fun with our <laughs> with our intern team. They've been doing some really impressive work, uh, really great stuff, especially as we move to our 50th anniversary. So I, when not working with the interns, I also do our other programs. So our book club and innovator series, both of which I have later this afternoon. So I am all Zoom all the time today, as well as some basic communications, marketing, um, things like like uh, program designs. So I get to do all sorts of fun things here. I did use to do the events. Well, you know, you're just an all around employee then. <laughs> it's so employee. important in so many areas. Which is really fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to listening in today, but I am really just here as a backup. So, um, if you all wouldn't mind introducing yourselves more to Madison and, and me, that would be great to get started. And then I'm going to turn it over to Maddie. Good. That's Good. great. I'm you go ahead. My name is Sarah McKay, and I have been affiliated with Florida House from the very beginning. And I feel like that um, it is really part of our great nation. It is so. Um, my mom's going to be ninety-seven in two weeks, so it's a fun, a fun month for us. July is always a um, a special time, and um, so I have grown, Paula Mims' daughter. Um, I'm also on the board of trustees, um, which my mom has been from the beginning, and we are we have sort of been at the core of our Florida House Council in Lakeland. Um, my mom has been involved, as she said, from the beginning, and I have been stuffing envelopes since probably the third grade or maybe second grade. <laughs> um, so I feel like I have also been involved since then. And she'll tell you a bit about her involvement with Rhea. And we have been lifelong friends of the Childs and the Ruthvens. Um, so that's been a, a lovely relationship. Um, and love Florida House and what it stands for, for it to be a an, uh, an embassy in, in DC and to play that role to bring people together um, in so many different ways. So um, what would you like to say? Give us just a second. Oh, I, we, we, we for a second. I, I think our internet is is giving us some problems momentarily. So um, let's hold tight for a second. It looks like it's stabilizing. Right. There we go. Okay. That's there right. we go. So she was saying 
you're on Madison as an interviewer you ask <laughs> well I have quite a few questions to ask um but one of the main things I want to ask is like when did you first hear about Florida House like when when did you first hear about this well <clears throat> a long time ago when Martin Charles was elected to the Senate he and Maria his uh wife took the children to Washington because of course you have to with children you have to find a dentist and a doctor and you know a lawyer the chief and all that good stuff schools especially and so <clears throat> after they had established that uh Lawton wanted to show them the embassies in uh, Washington so he did and he pointed them all out and everything and uh, one of the children, I think it was Ed, that said, well, Dad, where is the Florida Embassy? And Lawton said, well, <clears throat> we don't have a, an embassy uh, because that's international. So that got Rhea to thinking, Florida needs an embassy in Washington. So as they were passing by the Capitol, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> she noticed uh, what uh, we would call a bed and breakfast today. And uh, she had a brother in Miami who was an architect. So she called him and said, can you come up here and redesign this house so that we can uh, really put it on the map? And he said, yes, he did. And that was the very beginning. <clears throat> But, um, of course, uh, I was asked to be on the board, and that was very flattering because uh, I felt very close to both of them and their families. But uh, it was a great beginning. I'm sure. And going so on uh, beginning enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> going on with that, uh, with how you are so close to Rhea Childs and um, Lawton Childs. What are some of your fondest memories that you have with them? Oh, well, of course, you know, uh, Lawton and Rhea, Rhea was, of course, born in Miami and grew up down there. But Lawton has been, uh, the Childs have been in Lakeland forever. And <clears throat> uh, the children, of course. And uh, it, um, you know, when you live in a small town, you, Madison, you just know everybody. And so, of course, everybody knew everybody else. And that was really wonderful. But, of course, um, <clears throat> the very beginning, which I think is wonderful about Florida House, is, as you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when the uh, colonists, won the American Revolution. General Washington knew that they had to have some kind of rules and regulations. So that is what is so important about the colonists because uh, he was elected president, of course, at that time for the, the group, the colonists. And so in the preamble, as you know, it says, we, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. That's the key. Justice. What is justice? And I think that's the basis of the whole thing that makes America so wonderful today is because we celebrate that. And the, the Declaration of Independence. And um, I think that we celebrate that with all of our fireworks and the red, white, and kaboom, you know, and in all the cities around the, uh, the United States. And I think, too, those are great points. I think also, um, as you're talking about D.C. and the celebrations of things, um, my mom and dad were um, involved in Lawton's um, elections from the very beginning. And um, my dad and Lawton practiced briefly together uh, as Both. well. 
both lawyers. Yeah, and so um, as Walk and Lawton went across the state, they were with him in a number of different ways as well. So it, it spanned sort of from the social, the, the familial, to um, political support and, and beyond as well. I don't know if you have ever seen uh, Lawton's uh, walking shoes, you know, Madison, he walked the state of Florida to get elected. And that is free. <laughs> so if you haven't seen those shoes, you really ought to look them up. <laughs> All right, we also have a, um, there's a McKay Archive Center here in Lakeland at Florida Southern. Um, and within the McKay Archive Center is the Lawton Child Center for Florida History. And so that's yet another connection that my mom helped establish um, when, she, when she established the, the archive center. It also holds the Florida Citrus um, archives as well. That may not be exact. And the United Methodist Church. And the archives of the United Methodist Church as well. So, um, so you might take a look at that and, and look um, into that aspect of not just this connection, but of the, the early Lawton. Mm -hmm. Going off of um, as well. Um, going off on, say, your early involvement with uh, the Florida House, um, I wanted to ask what it was like. What was it like being involved with Florida House in the early days? I remember I heard uh, a lot of envelope stuffing and. Um, spreading the word so I kind of want to know like what it what was it like well it was very exciting of course but when you sure. are focused on a project you get it to be successful by being emphatic and also if well you have to be passionate about it and so of course Paula uh, grew up stuffing on the hopes because, you know, Florida House is supported by the people of Florida and there's no political aspects to it at all, which is wonderful. Can you remember <clears throat> the first time you visited Florida House when you went to D.C.? Can you remember kind of what it might have looked like oh, yes. early on? Yes, yes. It was, well, it was an old building that was being reconstructed. So, of course... It, uh, and now uh, the gardens, uh, the, the directors had done a wonderful job by uh, beautifying the yards and keeping the place up, you know. You, you've got to keep it painted and you've got to keep it uh, all fixed. And we had a lot of people donate different things like the rug in the, in the room and the, the couch and um one of the desks and uh, the entranceway and um, painting. So just like with, in other embassies or even at the Kennedy Center where things are given by different groups, I think what you're saying is that different people wanted to be involved in, yes. in whatever capacity they were able to be. Because Would that be accurate? Yes, that's accurate. And then too, of course, when you have a... a, a um, project like that that's so exciting and especially in dc good grief you've got people really knocking on the door to be part of it and i think that that's one of the great things about it and <clears throat> uh, excuse me the um pr that has spread throughout the state has been wonderful because no other state has one of these places. And that is what is so wonderful. And Madison, you may know this, but um, other states have tried to do places like Florida House, but they make the mistake of putting it in their state legislature, their, their, their budgets and funds. And, yeah. And, and, and the then thing to be cut is this right. project, which is right. why the Florida House has been able to be successful because it's all private. It's all uh, funded by people who want this to happen, which is really amazing. 
And well, I, mean, I think too, Madison, that uh, when you go to D.C., if you don't know your way around, you can go to Florida House and get a map and you can drink orange juice or coffee and sometimes cookies. <laughs> but um, the thing about it is you can't spend the night there, but, but mm -hmm. you can find where to spend the night. And I think that that's wonderful. And the Florida House has played an awful great part when there have been um, uprisings around the world. They seem to zero in on the focus of that and they have been able to help get the uh, news in a correct form. I think one of the things she might be referring to is, for instance, when September 11th happened, mm -hmm. you know, really played as a media um, hub, if you will, because of the location, which really goes back to what you were saying about Rhea wanting to have it in such a central location, to have it so close to everything that is DC. Um, and, and you even touched on something else about the way that Florida House has changed. You know, now with, with such um, access to maps and those kinds of things on people's phones, when Florida House started, people didn't have the map. Um, you know, unless you went to AAA before you came to DC or something. So back in the day, 50 <clears throat> years ago, almost, um, it was Florida House really played that role of being truly almost like a, the conduit for, for all the school children, for all of, um, of any citizens from Florida who, and anybody else who visited to give them a, a plan, to give them a plan for DC. Certainly Florida House has had to broaden its relevance um, since that time because we, th th everybody has access now. They all, everybody knows where to go, what to do, all of that sort of thing but they don't have a place to put their feet up. They don't have a place for somebody who can say, oh, where's that really special restaurant? Or can you get us tickets to this? Or, you know, what is what lectures do you have going on that we can connect with even when we're at our own homes around Florida for a book club or, you know, that sort of thing. And I think too, that one of the most wonderful things about the Florida House is that it has helped young people understand the constitution because you know where would we be without that constitution and those colonists who were really good thinkers they knew what they were doing and i think that that is just so great because it will help young people to realize not how to be taught to think but what to think and uh, you can always grow uh, an inch or two when you learn something new. And I think uh, definitely about the education, because I know there was the case Civic Series initiative that was created. And I wanted to know, say, your take on the initiative and also education, like the future of education in general for Florida <laughs> students. But you hit a nerve there because I'm a great advocate of education, and I think a big a big public school advocate <laughs> also. Yes, and I think that um, we must do that because that's the basis of the civilization, and I'm sure you agree. I do. I think that what was happening. So there were two things. The the part of. Florida House needed in that interim period needed a purpose for what was beginning what they need they need to stand out so we need to stand out somehow from other just other nonprofits that were trying to raise money and do these things so to have a pertinence and to have a an in with the schools um, in something that's so vital as civics education now it's it has become something a little different but but let's just speak broadly that civics education is an important component of all of our <laughs> lives um, to be able to understand, you know, where to vote, how to vote, who to vote, you know, all of these, these sort of basic things. <laughs> and so civics education really gives that basis. Well, when I was in high school many years ago, uh, I had a civics teacher and a history teacher. 
I know that that civics teacher told us in the 10th grade every six weeks, you must learn when to vote. But first you've got to find out where you register and go register. And then you've got to find out who is running. And if you agree with them, work for them. And for goodness sakes, don't forget to vote. And I know, Madison, that that woman must have told us that every six weeks. And I know for a fact that she must have had that on her tombstone. Don't <laughs> forget to vote. Then the history teacher was uh, great about underlining. And uh, she told the history you know, of the United States and the colonists in General Washington. And uh, she said that if you <clears throat> study what I tell you to underline, you'll pass my course. So of course, I underline even today, except in the library books that I check out downtown. <laughs> but um, yeah, you'd get in trouble if you did that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but it's it's a great habit because that helps you to focus on what you're reading. I think the other part of the civics, um, and this is more of a subscript than it is a, a history lesson. But Florida House was in a position of needing to do some fundraising, and to be able to have an educational component made it. It, it, you know, where you write that purpose in grants and different things, you've got to have some, you've got to have a hook. And mm -hmm. not only did it provide a great possibility for children to be educated in these ways um, from the, I think it was the, um, the Constitution Association out of Philadelphia, right? Um, and the, the um, curriculum that Bart Hudson helped to get together as well. Um, but it also gave Florida House a little bit of a hook to say we're not just a, a place for people to socialize, for people to get orange juice. It, it was really kind of the beginning of having the meat of what else do we offer. It was, it was some specific, it had some specific goals that could be attached to um, projects and outcomes as well. That's really interesting. I just, I, I'm so proud of how we can engage with students of all ages, from the students who come up here in um, with their scout troops and the students who come up here as interns. And it's so exciting to hear about the legacy of education and the impact. So one of these things, I actually wanna jump back and Paul, I have a question for you. Um, we talked about how Mrs. McKay first learned about Florida House. And one of the things she mentioned is that you'd been stuffing envelopes from the very start. What's your first memory of Florida House? Uh, my first memory of Florida House is, you know, those little rollers that you roll envelopes. Y'all probably don't know about these, but you roll. It has a little water in the bottom of it. You roll on top of it. I probably did a thousand envelopes every time we had parties for Florida House. So that was my first, um, I, I had already been steeped in the, you know, just social friend, you know, friends of our family and that sort of thing. I still have that liquor. Yeah, we, we still use the same. We could probably put the liquor <laughs> to us because we, that sounds great. And we have to do everything by hand these days. So you all have yeah. had it right back. In yeah. So <laughs> I would say, that was, you know, it's always been, it's always been a part of the, the, McKay landscape around here you know we've got a picture that Maria <laughs> painted from the window of Florida House here and each year I think really the Lakeland Council was probably the first council um and it nice. works very differently. Madison you may know this I know Kate you know this but each council works very differently in how they fundraise and their responsibility to the budget overall for Florida House and so um you know every little bit helps um but the way the Lakeland Council does it, only because you're interviewing us, is that we have one party a year. I know the Orlando Council is like this big buddy travel book club, you know, sleepover group. Oh, they're a um, Yeah, they're very, they're very, very, um, they have a very intimate group. So our, the, the pull for our folks is that we put on one party a year. 
you bring your, you bring, if you're on our council, you bring a great big, beautiful platter of food. It's all homemade food. We pick new, beautiful homes to have um, the party in. And then everybody shows up. They're always in a great mood. They always write checks. And that's how we've been able to do it um, through the years. We don't have big entertainment. We don't, um, you know, it's not a ton of bells and whistles, but it's the consistency. In fact, we even have people who come um, for the tenderloin. <laughs> so, so that's sort of, you know, that's one of the things that, that we get to do here. And if you use a liquor, be sure to put a towel underneath it because it, when you're rubbing those envelopes. Oh, she means out. liquor like, like the, the you moisturizer. Know. I thought you were talking about the party, the liquor at the party. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. <clears throat> but uh, sometimes, you know, that water splashes out. And then ruin your tablecloth. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to protect your tablecloth. <laughs> um, wait one second. I have to do this real quick. Mrs. McKay, what were those parties like in the 1970s? What was it like to gather together in those early days and celebrate our state embassy? Well, oh, I think that everybody was uh, so happy to get out because, you know, in the early days, um, that was just unheard of. You didn't have big parties. And um, you say that, but I actually think if you if you really think about it, you did a lot of gathering of friends together for no real reason. And I almost feel like maybe do you think the party evolved from that, that you already enjoyed being around? Well, I, I think that's true, but it goes back to the thing about being passionate and focus on what you're doing. And I think that that's how it evolved. And thank you for mentioning that. Um, like for instance, I think Florida House around here at least, now it's no big deal. Everybody has fundraisers, right? Like like you could have a fun, families have fundraisers for goodness sakes, for different things. But back then, I think Florida House was unique in gathering. I think it was probably one of, one of the really looked forward to parties um, that people could go to and see friends and meet new people and dress up, dress up and, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. So little makeup goes a long way. <laughs> Who were some of the most interesting people you met at these parties? Oh, my. Well, you didn't maybe meet them, but maybe mention some of it because she knew everybody. So tell some people that like oh, Bronson's and. Oh, well, uh, Judge Bronson and his wife, Becky, live right down the road here. And um, then um, the Coxes, uh, he was a representative. And uh, they live across the lake. And um, they were good friends. And then, of course, um, Joe and Jeanette. Ruthven. Joe and Jeanette Ruthven. And then Judy. And Judy, of course. And... Um, Kay Hagen uh, was a senator, and um, Kay was a Ruthen and a child. And um, uh, if you wait, I can get my dictionary out <laughs> or my telephone book out. But it was just home folks. Yeah, it, I think it really started very organically um, around here that way. It wasn't, if people, didn't get an invitation and were surprised um, by getting the invitation. They had seen one another at Publix or had been in book club together or, you know, when you say it grew very much word from, of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth from, from friends at that time. Um, yeah, and I think um, going back to what you all were talking about, what we were sort of discussing about the civics education and how that ended up being a bit of a, um, launching pad for these other programs, you know, even the arts programs. And, and I think what that program really did was greater in, even in terms of saying, okay, what else can we do to be an interesting organization? You know, how can we support the arts in Florida? How can we support our artists, our authors? Um, what can we do to bring people and celebrate Florida um, in that way as well. Because really before that, 
it was a fairly, I, I may be speaking out of turn, but it was a fairly um, narrow niche that Florida House met in terms of, you know, maps and, and um, you know, like, like being a home away from home is sort of how it's always had been done. And so now, and even now it's difficult. We have to get the word out. You know, if you ask somebody on the street what Florida House is, they don't know. So but it's fun to tell them about it too. Right. And also I think that um we can <clears throat> excuse me. Um we can remember too that um the civics project, which is um very near to our hearts, um and mine especially, but um the fact that it started and it was passionate. And the directors of Florida House have all been wonderful. And they have, Diana Beckman has been great. Uh, Bart Hudson was wonderful. And um, he, I, I remember Bart would have a um, an arrangement of fruit on the standing and you go, go in the door and it would have uh, um, oranges and grapefruits and um, strawberries when they were in season, and um, a pineapple and, and flowers too. He always yeah. did, he was a big flower person as yeah. well, so he always had lots of flowers. And I think the other thing that we've seen in the last fifteen to twenty, probably twenty years, um, and and correct me if you think that there's something different about this, is that to really make those connections with businesses and other associations. So to really reach out and create collaborative efforts, um, which wasn't necessary in the early days um, so much, but now it it's vital, right? For to, to keep Florida House, um, you know, I keep going back to that word relevant, but that's kind of what, what we have to do with it is to um, have other people kind of need us, right? So why do they need us? They kind of need us because of the geographic location of Florida House potentially. Um, they need us because of the apolitical nature of Florida House. Um, you know, those kinds of things. But business, business people love to have a place in Florida, from Florida. Business people from Florida love to have a place to go have a meeting. And they can do that at Florida House. And I'm sure you both know uh, readily how expensive things are in Washington, D.C. But with Florida House established like that, that um, repeat itself. And they also do the upkeep of Florida House. And that's kind of what I'm talking about too. That's a great point in terms of just the support of, of the house is, you know, if we can establish these collaborative efforts with other industries or other organizations, associations, even um, I know that this is us, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but, um, but even the um, cherry blossom, you know, the state society of cherry, you know, all of those kinds of things, that is also a, a bit of a launching point, right? So to be able to say, and I don't even know if we're doing, if we've done it this past year or not, but but for a while, that was a pretty big thing because it would allow um, Florida House to be showcased for all of these other states to come in and and be introduced um, because they always had one of the, um, the receptions was at Florida House. So now you've got kids from all over, the, not kids, young people, you've got students, college, typically college students from all over the country that are coming and being introduced to Florida House, and it's a whole new generation um, that are introduced to it, so. And basically going on, so we've talked about the past, and we've talked about the present, but I want to know, like, what is your biggest wish, like, for the future of Florida House as, as it continues to evolve, um, as the world evolves? Well, I think that I hope that people will recognize how important it is to have a place like Florida House in the capital. And it's necessary uh, to stay focused on that. And I do hope 
that young people will do that, just that, continue to contribute, to contribute to learn. And um, that's the basis of it right there. Okay. That is our hope too. That is, as we move to the 50th anniversary, we are fully on board for another 50 years of yes. Yes, uh, join us for the celebrations. We are so excited to, to keep growing, to keep thriving, but to build on what you created, Mrs. McKay, what you and Rhea established in 1973 and beyond. It's just been a tremendous opportunity for us to see how a state embassy has evolved since then and to see the work that you and Maria Childs and the other governors and our supporters have, have helped in identifying these ways that Florida House can support people, whether it's visitors, whether it's students. And we are so immensely grateful and honored that you all have been a part of this and continue to be so. So we're just touched that you all joined us today and are oh, you it's very flattering to be asked what you think. <laughs> well, there are very few viewpoints that are more important. And there are, you know, you have such a tremendous picture of what, who we are and who we can be. So being able to hear from you, being able to get your vision, to get your passion for education and civics learning but also for what we're doing here. That's, that's the most valuable thing we have right now is our history and our story. And we're ready to grow that. Madison is helping with, with her work, but getting, getting your view is just amazing. Well, I have just one thing to say in finishing my speech here is there is a, a, poem by a man by the name, last name of Stanton and it is keep a going so that's what we have to do at Florida House we have to keep a going and doing what we have done and continue that forever thank you thank you thank you so much thank, thank you. you it was a privilege if we think of anything else we will we will reach out thank you all right Bye-bye. Oh, uh, Mrs. McKay, have a great rest of the day. Thank you Y'all so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.